G'day everyone, welcome to the Open Mills. My name's Phil and I'm just come back from my recent Andamooka trip. Uh, we did some live streaming up there, if you caught that, thank you. And sorry I didn't give everyone else much warning, we weren't too sure how it was going to go. But from my understanding we just achieved the first underground mining Opal live stream ever. <laughs> um, and that's going to be more to come. So it wasn't a one-off, there'll be more opportunities. But in that video, pulled out some concrete. So we're gonna take a bit of a look at that and follow it up. Uh, we'll probably get it into a treat later. Uh, it won't be for this video, but we'll have a look at what we've got. Um, uh, there will be more. I wanted to do a live stream cutting under there too. So that's gonna be something coming up. Um, also did a bit of black lighting. So here's something pretty interesting. I found this and it had a bit of opal showing through the black light. It wasn't until the next day we got out into the sun and wow, it was quite a nice little chunk. And I sort of fractured it, but underneath, it just showed up more. And I'm like, unreal. To my understanding, this is a black quartz that's been opalized. Let's get a bit of water. So that was quite an interesting little find. I'm not sure if I can get some stones out of there. Should be able to if it doesn't break up on me. I'm thinking it should be pretty stable. It looked like it got beaten apart from where it came from. And hopefully there's no none of these fractures that continue in too far. Might be able to get a little stone out of there. Actual black opal. <laughs> well, technically. So every now and then you get a bit of a glint of green in this too. I'm trying to find it. There's a flood of it somewhere. Some nice bands running through it. There we go. It's up on this side. You can get it to the right angle. There we go. It's a bit green up in here. So yeah, that was quite an interesting little piece. Um, I was going to do a live stream black light, but the bugs <laughs> put a stop to that idea very quickly. As soon as you turn the light on, they're all jumping straight towards you, trying to jump on the torch. So that wasn't much fun. Sorry about that. I'll have to organize it another time when I'm out, out of bug season. <laughs> um, so we'll get organized and have a bit quick, closer look at this stuff. Yeah, so I've got some water here. So I tried to piece this together, let's quickly zoom out. And these two chunks clearly sat together in the ground like that. And that did get broken apart. And I'm pretty sure this piece came off the back here somewhere. And then I pieced together these two. I think they had a natural separation in them. That'll come off that white, lighter material. It'll go dark gray underneath. So this is concrete matrix, um, rainbow matrix, and it can get quite colorful. Um, at least we got a bit of color in this one. Zoom back in. So we'll get this bit of water on it. I'm not sure which ones of these had color, but some of them do have a bit of purple in them. See if we can capture that a bit better here than in the mine. I can't see too much on this one. Which means that won't, but I'm pretty sure it was these two. It's 
not really going to show up too well for me, is it? I can see it here, but it's not showing through the camera. There's a layer about halfway up this grey patch. Up in here goes purple. It's not showing too well. Let's see what this side does. better there we go it's a glimpse of it here you can sort of see it's a bit pin fiery through there and it's very hard to see it's very faint there's a line that runs through it does continue into the other ones and uh, this is why it needs a treatment to darken that and hopefully bring the color out a lot more so I'll basically just be taking off as much host rock as I can and just chucking them whole straight for a treat, as is. Imagine these bits. Oh, there we go. All over the top there. So this top comes down and we'll try and get a stain out of that piece. Might even clean that one right up. She might even do that this video. We'll clean this piece up so we can trace it and it'll go in with the rest for a treatment. So yeah, there's only a minute bit of colour down there, but that was something. First live stream underground and found something with colour. <laughs> that was pretty cool. So yeah, I might go, I might go cut this one, eh? Uh, I've got the light off. I'll do this one freehand. This is our top, the colour that we're going to keep. So just be trimming up the sides. You've got to know there's a colour bar there, which I do. So I'm going to treat it as that whole top layer as a colour bar and just cut a stone accordingly. See, I need to take a bit off here. So just put it on a 150 grit. We'll go from there. Got this side our top. So the purple comes right down on this side, which is good. This is a thick bar. It's working. Real dot dot. Lights up on the camera. 
cut this and have another good look at it. I'm under the uh, 240 grit now. Alright, all finished. Just to mention, I've got a bit of footage from my last trip nonetheless. I did the live stream, so that's already up there, but there's a bit of the footage I'd usually have included in the video. I'll tack on the end of this one. There may be a low light of this while it's untreated. But here we go. Inside this material hides this sort of a stone. And you may think, eh, whatever. That's cool. But it's still opal. Now, you can see these white patches. They're a very soft material in amongst it. And it leaves a slight little dimple there. Once treated, due to this, it's not uncommon to seal this with a resin, uh, just to protect it. And it gives it that wet look again, uh, as much as a polish surface this sort of is. There's too much going on on the surface to give it a true representation. And I'll signify that by going into water. And there, that's the look you want. You can't achieve that with this material due to this porousness. And therefore, yeah, resin coated. So does it detract from the value? Well, if you had something like this that was untreated and perfectly looked like this, um, as opposed to one resin coated, yeah, of course, the resin coated one will be cheaper, but this stuff doesn't polish, so does it devalue this specific stone from what it is? No. Um, in fact, it makes it more appealing, even though it's got the resin coating. That's sort of the nature of the beast of this stuff. And once treated, I'm hoping this really pops a bit with the purples. But as you can see already, yeah, it's quite a bit of color in that. Sprinkle around. And if that's all there is, make lemonade. So there's my lemonade. Might get that independent and whack it up for a hundred bucks, set in silver, something. That's extra uh, fuel money, and uh, every bit counts. Why not? So yeah, there we go. All right. So just in case anyone was interested, um, yeah, looking at roughly eighty-six carats in that stone, and. At a dollar a carat, there's an $86 stone. <laughs> but, um, yeah, 20 cents a carat or something like that, probably. We'll see what happens once it treats and how it treats, and that might increase the value. But as is, it's a nice stone. Even as is. In the sun, you get hints of the purple come through, so it's not totally just a rock. Anyway, there we go. Lots to get on with at the moment. Got some gold on order. Got a couple of gold rings we'll be making next week. Got some stones that we're going to be not cutting, but correcting. And some stones to cut. Silver rings. Other stones to cut. Oh, there's so much. So stick around. i put some low light in and the rest of the uh, footage from my trip. Cheers.
Welcome to Hotel Andamuka. It's been millions of years in the making. We've got swimming pools, mud saunas, rocks to skip. <laughs> oh dear. Yeah, we. Ooh. Fish. Local fish, yeah. Oh, we go get a line. Anyway. <laughs> Yeah, had a lot of water. Just uh, sitting here looking out my front door. <laughs> Little gecko. And then, just noticed this. Very cute couple. Hi guys. <laughs> I'll leave mine. 